So the talk I'm giving today, um, it's about my journey into development and also Muay Thai, which is a style of kickboxing. Um, both the things I got involved with at around the same time, and so the journeys sort of go in hand in hand. It's going to be a little bit of a comparison. Um, just in case anyone might be offended, I'm going to let you know you will see images of people getting punched in the face during this talk. Sorry. My name is Selena Small, and I'm a full-time software engineer. I write code every day for a living. I love it. It's great. I have experience with PHP, Ruby, and JavaScript, and I'm particularly interested in domain logic modeling and how systems integrate through public APIs. I'm also a professional Nakamoy Ying, a female Thai boxer. Muay Thai is a variation of what most people know as kickboxing, um, and it's Thailand's national sport. Also known as the art of eight limbs, Muay Thai is a very technical and dangerous sport, which aims to inflict damage on opponents using punches, kicks, knees, and elbows as weapons. But my life wasn't always like this. In fact, not five years ago, I didn't even know what a terminal prompt was. And I really didn't understand the concept of this thing called coding. I can still remember the first time I even saw a terminal. I remember thinking to myself, wow, you can open up a window and talk to your computer? <laughs> I mean, now it sort of makes sense, of course. What was I thinking? But I'd never seen machines used like that before. I'd only ever used a computer to check my emails, write a word with, uh, write a document with Microsoft Word, or download torrents. <laughs> so you might be asking yourself, well, how did I end up where I am now? My journey starts in a small town in New Zealand, Waihi, a town with a population of 3,000 people. When I was younger, I was always that weird kid who kind of sat in the corner doing puzzles or stood at the art stand painting a picture while all the other kids were outside playing. And as I got older, I took a major interest in sports. Soccer, hockey, rugby, netball, swimming, basketball, you name it, I played it. I'd had a good upbringing. And I always saw my parents work hard and reap the rewards of their labor. And by the age of 18, I was ready to do the same. I set out to study landscape architecture in Wellington. I gave it a good two years before I decided it just wasn't for me. At the time, I figured a triple diploma in business management and accounting. Sounds pretty flash. And sounds like something I could probably apply to anything I wanted to do in the future. A lighter workload plus the flexibility and the hours of hospitality meant that I could study full time and work full time as well, pay it off as I went along. By the time I graduated, I was also the general manager at Minibar, putting everything I'd learned into practice. Minibar is one of Wellington's most well-known late night bars, open till 6 a.m. every night of the week, and the most happening place in town at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Working there was great. I was 21 years old, getting paid to party, and running the show. I was having the time of my life. High all day, drunk all night, selling alcohol to alcoholics. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty easy ride, right? But it didn't take long for that lifestyle to consume me. And soon I found I had become toxic. I was in a terrible place. I hated everything and everyone around me. And I was sick. I was skinny and I was pale and I couldn't walk 20 minutes down the street without having to go home and have a nap. My life was out of control. And the people, Oh, the people, they drained me. I needed to constantly pick up my staff, console the girls when their girlfriend, boyfriends broke up with them so they'd get back on the bar and sell liquor, entertain guests whose company I just didn't enjoy so they'd come back later that night and spend their money, and diplomatically deal with non-stop bitching, nagging, and moaning from hundreds of people every night. It got to the point where there was no way I could go to work without having a drink and there was no way that I could stay for another hour without having another one. At my worst, 
I was drinking two litres of straight spirits a week just to get through my job. <laughs> I hated who I'd become, and I hated the people I surrounded myself with. But so, how did I get to here from there? Well, funny you ask. One day something struck me. These people, this environment, it was wearing me out and I had to just get away from it all. In a matter of weeks, I flipped my life upside down, kicked my boyfriend out of my apartment, stopped the drinking, stopped the drugs, stopped smoking weed all day, every day, got out of bar work, got a day job, managing operations in a restaurant. Not quite out of hospitality yet, but it's a step in the right direction. It was a way to get out of night work and into a daytime routine. Something to get into a healthier lifestyle and clear my head and figure out what the next step would be. The way I got from where I was to where I am is as simple as five steps, which I've learned you can apply to any goal you want to achieve. First things first. You're going to need some inspiration if you ever hope to achieve anything. So where do you find inspiration? Where did I find inspiration? Looking for a change, I was browsing uni courses, and computers were the only thing that sort of resonated with my interests. They could allow me to have an artistic outlet while solving puzzles. And it was completely the opposite of what I'd been doing in, like, in nightclubs. On my way out of nightlife, one of my best regulars at Minibar was Tom, a software engineer who had a genuine passion for teaching others. And when I told him I was interested in computers, he said to me, well, why don't you get into IT? Turning my life around, I also wanted to get healthy. Having always been active as a kid, I knew the best way to get back on track was with sports. So I found a local kickboxing gym who had a big focus on fitness training for women. As it turns out, that gym had genuine professional Thai fighters teaching Muay Thai technique. And once I had some basic skills down, I went along to a couple of sparring classes. Just as quickly as the first punch I ever received shook me, I was hooked. So now that you're inspired, it's time to learn some skills. Step two. Tom, from Minibar, offered to show me some code and when I took an interest, he sent me through some topics to go and research. He started me off remotely sending through problems about binary hex conversions, logic gates, B trees, traversing linked lists. And after moving back to Wellington, he explained pointers and showed me how to write them using assembly language. I felt like a kid again, sitting in the corner doing puzzles. This is a snippet of the first piece of code I ever wrote. It's a very simple loop. <clears throat> written in assembly language to print out a different piece of text for each of five numbers. This is Tom. Tom showed me a lot. He introduced me to concepts I'd never heard of, people I might otherwise have never met, and an entire profession which otherwise might have missed out on the joy of my presence. <laughs> I can't pinpoint the exact moment that it all started, but somewhere along the line, it just became normal for me, me, me to be learning how to code. Tom taught me the basic concepts of computer science and he helped me write my first program. It was a dice game, written in assembly 68K using Vim as the editor on a virtual machine. But what I remember most about learning with Tom is his outlook on software. First, solve the problem. If you don't have a solution, you've got nothing to optimize. Do not produce or tolerate shit. No one wants their name against crappy code, right? <clears throat> and most importantly, IT is about people. If no one's using your software, you don't have any software. In coding, you need to have a deep understanding of core concepts. Those can sometimes take a while to sink in. But learning Muay Thai was a very different experience. It was something that I needed to do daily. I needed to instinctively learn how to recreate moves at the drop of a hat. Muscle memory learned through full on immersion, four to five days a week. Step three, 
credibility. Tom introduced me to a number of people, including a friend who had launched his own startup. A couple of conversations later, and it was as simple as that, I got my first dev job. Instantly gaining credibility. <laughs> <laughs> the role was only part-time, but it was an opportunity I couldn't refuse. I'd be working directly with the CTO, learning how a real live application really works. Putting my skills into practice with HTML, CSS, and a little bit of Node. Similarly, to get anywhere in Muay Thai, you need to have credibility. There though, there's only one way to, uh, there's only one way to prove it, and you're either credible or you're not. It's simple. You step in the ring and you stand and you fight. Or, you step in the ring and when the when the bell dings, you try and run out through the ropes. Or you don't step in the ring at all. I quickly gained so much credibility in novice matches that I was soon lined up for a real fight. No shin guards, no oversized 16 ounce gloves, just a mouth guard for protection. I would be flown into city and featured on Lethal Ladies, Hostile Invasion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, step four. See how easy this is? <laughs> when? Well, working as a junior developer, I was there. I had it. And just as quickly as I got hired, I got fired. <laughs> I simply did not have enough experience. The contract only lasted a few short months before they said they just didn't have the capacity for someone so junior. The small startup was taking off and they needed someone who could come in and just get the job done. Lethal ladies, the show I'd been match, matched on came up soon after. Started out great. I smashed my opponent. I dominated like I always did. Threw everything at her and she just didn't have an answer. Success and that glory I'd been chasing was just around the corner. But in the third round, <coughs> an accident happened and the way we fell meant that I dislocated my shoulder. Unable to continue, the fight was called off and my opponent given the win. This is known as a technical knockout, because one fighter can't continue. In the moment that it happens, it's not so bad, but if you've ever dislocated your shoulder before, you'll know, the next seven days are agony. This injury, as you can imagine, took me out of the Muay Thai scene and in fact any gym for the next little while. It's funny what they say, when it rains it pours. And this wasn't the first time that the universe was going to make a joke out of me and all my aspirations. But I went back to my formula and I made another attempt. Back to the chalkboard. Didn't get the win with the job, but I still had inspiration. I just needed to learn more. Tom introduced me to more IT people and I made the most of every introduction, whether it was a quick tip, Help with data modeling or understanding deployment strategies, I was always finding ways to learn as much as I could from them. And generally, they happily helped me as well. I had an out of the box blog on WordPress.org that I've been using to write about my journey. Um, sorry, I just lost my spot. <laughs> the available themes were pretty average, so I decided to write one of my own. And when I needed to host it, I went to AWS and hosted one on an EC2 instance. Eventually, my free tier ran out. It happens after about a year if you don't have an account already. Um, I needed a cheaper option. So I learned some Go and migrated the whole thing over to Hugo. Sitting in an S3 bucket now. Um, at the restaurant I was running, we'd been using the online reservation system. I didn't enjoy using it, so I tried to build something better. Obviously, it didn't work out. Otherwise, I'd be the starter of my Vero, uh, founder of my very own startup, and we'd be having a very different talk right now. But the point is, I built something half working to show off my skills, and I managed to get as far as I did from help with, from the, with help from the people around me. So back to you guys. The lesson here is that you should absolutely be open to meeting people. Any opportunity you get to learn with them. Take it. Just look around. Ruby community, great place for meeting people and talking to people. It's a very open and welcoming group. <clears throat> Some of the 
people, Tom introduced me to, offered great tips for meeting potential employers and showing off my credibility. When I was applying for my first dev role, it didn't really matter at the time where I worked, I just needed to get my one year of experience. And that, as Tom put it, was gold dust. After one year of experience, this would never be hard again. So how do you get that one year under your belt? Here are some tips that help me out. Let people know you're available. Basically, talk to anyone who will listen and don't be afraid to tell them your passion. People love to hear what you're passionate about. Blogging about your passion doesn't hurt either. Get social. You've got to go out and network and meet people. And I guarantee you have a 100% better chance of meeting someone who could help you if you leave your house than if you sit at home and watch TV. Get someone to look over your CV. It's most likely that when you apply, your CV is going to be filtered before any developer sees it. So make sure it's accessible. I happened to know a guy at the time who was the team lead in a large corporation, and he looked over hundreds of graduate CVs every day. He basically told me, that piece of paper needs to stand out. If you don't have a degree and you don't have any experience, you need to have something that counts. And on that advice, I decided I needed to get AWS certified. A junior developer with proven AWS experience, plus a certificate to back it up, and a little bit of life experience, had the potential to be more useful to any business immediately than a graduate with a fancy degree and zero life experience and no knowledge of any cloud platforms. Apply for every job that's interesting to you. Some companies don't advertise for juniors, but if the right one comes along, they're still going to take you, potentially. Besides, just meeting the people who do the hiring instantly gives you more exposure. I've had people who couldn't take on juniors pass my CV onto people they knew who then got in touch with me. It's all about the network. The first time I applied to, uh, tried to apply for a dev job, like I said, I just wanted to get in the industry. I got my CV to, together and I applied to 107 companies in Wellington, where I very quickly got a number of responses like, we don't have the capacity to take on juniors at the moment. You need to have a minimum of two years experience to apply to this role. We're currently at capacity for juniors, but try again in a couple of months. Surprisingly, I actually also managed to line up around 10 interviews, a bad out of 107. Think of interviews as practice for other interviewers. For me, this made things a whole lot easier and I was so much more confident going in. And the more interviews I did, guess what? The better I got at them. Don't settle for the first offer if it doesn't feel right. One company looking for a junior was extremely keen to hire me. I'd be working in, at the local office along with a senior developer who was remote 90% of the time. And they made it sound great. A place where I could come and, come and go as I pleased, choose which hours suited me. Sounds pretty sweet. Well, you need to think about what it is you want to get out of this job you're applying for. Sure, if I had some experience and I was confident in my code, I'd love to work in such a flexible job. But in that moment, I was, and I still very much am, trying to catch up to everyone else who has a degree and who is my age already and has already been working for years as a dev. I wanted to learn and the experience I've had before was that I needed someone on hand to explain things in person if I'm truly going to absorb as much as possible. We call it like with Muay Thai. Right, sometimes the win is a little bit out of your hands. After my accident in the ring, I was already pretty skilled but I just needed to recover and get strong again. Two months of rest and a whole lot of weight training later, my shoulder was finally strong enough to get back into Muay Thai. I just needed another opportunity to prove myself. All right, ready for the win again. My inspiration's still there. I've got more skills, leveled up my credibility. This time, I was ready. At the beginning of 2016, I lined up three clear goals. Goal number one, get an AWS certificate. 
I mentioned earlier how good an AWS certification might look on your CV when you don't have any formal qualifications. And I absolutely agree. I loved the idea. So much so that I spent six weeks studying for the easiest certification that I could get. I was an absolute mess. Like, I was losing my mind, like, sacrificing, cleanliness, eating, sleeping, training, whatever. <laughs> because I believed that this was going to be a game changer for me. And also because I suck at exams. They give me anxiety and I panic, forget everything that I put on the spot. That's why I need notes today. Um, so because this was proctored, I knew I needed to study twice as hard. And when I put a lot of effort into something, I kind of expect to do well. Well, I didn't do so well. I failed the exam. Short by one question. It's kind of like a punch in the face. <laughs> I met up with my good mate, Captain Morgan, and I cried for two days straight. <laughs> I honestly thought it was the end of the world. Such a drama queen. I didn't know what to do next. Goal number two, win a fight. Just a few days later, I'd found something to take my mind off my misery. Do you remember way back when I dislocated my shoulder during a Muay Thai fight? Well, I'd been back to training, and in a month's time, I was going to make my big return to the ring. Never mind about the stupid certificate, I'm officially going to win a fight and I'm going to do it on the biggest promotion in Wellington. I'm going to feature on Razor Promotions on a 10. Seems like a great way to switch my focus and get my head back in the game, right? Well, that didn't quite work out either. I lost the match on a split decision. Do you know what that means? It means I lost by exactly one point. <laughs> <coughs> kind of also like a punch in the face. Sounds familiar, right? Goal number three, get a job. At this stage, I'd also gotten past the final interview for a role that suited me perfectly. It was a hospitality-based solution, something I knew all too well, and it was a role that would be part-time customer service, part-time development, moving later into full-time development. Sounds like an ideal transition. They were just putting together the paperwork for the position they'd offered me, and I thought to myself, I've done it. I can only move forward from here. This was great. But suddenly everything else wasn't important anymore. Then I received an email. Can you guess what the email was? <coughs> the company decided it was no longer offering that position. It was like I'd missed out by just one chance. Over the course of a weekend, they completely changed their mind. And they might as well have punched me in the face. I was absolutely devastated. I'd written an entry in my blog at the time, and I'm going to read it to you now. I feel kind of trapped at this point. I'm never going to get my break. That's all I wanted. One opportunity, one chance, and I didn't even get that. After what feels like a lifetime of back and forth pissing around to get the response of, no, we're not giving you a chance, and turning down guaranteed offers, feels like I might as well just pack up my things and give up on trying to live life. There's clearly nothing here for me. And after a response like that, I actually feel quite embarrassed. Seems like every time I'm about to succeed, I fall flat on my face. I've been so close. But there you have it, my three goals for the year, all lined up waiting for me, and I just missed every single one. When one thing goes wrong, everything seems to go wrong at the same time, right? Well, on the other hand, when one thing works out, everything seems to work out at the same time too. In the past, I'd had all these negative people around me, but now I've got really good people around me, encouraging me, pushing me to succeed, reminding me of all the accomplishments that I've made, how far I've come in both development and Muay Thai. Finally, I was having meaningful relationships with people. I had succeeded in detoxifying. And I didn't quit trying to achieve my goals either. I'd somehow managed to line everything up before. Surely I could do it again. I could probably do it again after that too, if I needed to, I think. 
In May of that year, I became an AWS certified developer. I got my win. <laughs> the very next day, an Auckland-based company reached out to me, flew me up for an interview, and they said, we want you. What will it take for you to join us? Was it a coincidence? Could have been. But given that I hadn't applied for any jobs in Auckland, and all I'd done since passing the test was update my online job profiles, seems like a pretty well-advised coincidence. I mean, who did these people think I was? Maybe they'd confuse me with somebody else. Like, I always say I'm pretty amazing, but it's kind of just me reassuring myself. But they were serious, and they offered me a very good contract. Another win! It took exactly three months from the day I sent out CVs in Wellington to the day I signed my first full-time role as a dev. And like I said, when one thing goes right well, it really all goes well. I got asked back by Razor Promotions for their next show, Honor 11. And I got my win. I finally got that shiny plastic trophy that had eluded me this whole time. <laughs> and of course, with all those words comes glory. So there you have it. The foolproof formula that got me from being a full-blown alcoholic wasting my life to not only changing the entire way that I live, but also catching me up on some of those years that I've missed out. Inspiration, skills, credibility, win, glory. These five steps mean that if I wanted to change my career again next week, I could. They mean that if I wanted to pursue, pursue Brazilian Samba instead of Muay Thai, I could. And much like Agile development, they're iterative. You're always circling back to what you need, whether it be new inspiration, more upskilling, or to just go straight for the win again. These five steps got me to where I am today. Do you remember when my friend told, Tom told me that one year of experience is gold dust? Well, he wasn't lying. And when I made the decision that I was going to move to Melbourne a year and, after a year and a half on the job, it's all just a matter of applying. Sure, I had ups and downs throughout the process, but I already knew how to deal with them. And this time, the entire process was a lot quicker. This time, I could be more selective about which roles I applied for. Next time, I'm gonna to get to be more selective again. I really wanted to work in an agile uh, company who practiced some level of TDD. And after some research about what was on offer, and a lot of help from across the ditch with look ahead search, these guys are pretty cool. You should have a chat with them, if you're looking, or if you're not. Um, <clears throat> I took my career international. I've been at Fresho now for eight months, simplifying supply and demand in the fresh food industry. I get to work, it's not really work, because I love it, every day in a startup where we're solving real problems on an application used by thousands of people every single day. At Fresho, we don't only practice TDD, we implement six layers of test-driven development. And not only that, the pairing-oriented environment means that my learning curve is exponentially steeper than it otherwise would be. I'm exactly where I want to be, writing good quality code for a genuine cause surrounded by passionate, supportive people. As an added bonus, the pool of Muay Thai fighters in Australia is a whole lot bigger than it is in New Zealand. <laughs> I've recently debuted in Melbourne's Naksu Female Fight Tour, a promotion focused on the exposure of women in professional sports, winning my match with a round one knockout. So where to next? Well, Melbourne's a nice city, I might stick around for a while. Since, you know, my software career's in full swing and all. Um, there's also currently a Victorian Muay Thai title up for grabs. Might have a crack at that. Might even free up some time for dating since, you know, kind of put my life on hold to follow my dreams <laughs> last couple of years. Um, but in all seriousness though, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am if I didn't keep pushing forward and surround myself with amazing supportive people. The quality of company is constantly improving and the new challenges I set, set for myself are becoming increasingly rewarding. Even just standing here giving this presentation, it's a massive win for me and it took a lot of work. Hopefully I get some positive feedback. Hopefully I'm allowed to present again in the future. 
And uh, hopefully you're seeing that here in a few months with my good friend and colleague, Michael Malewski, to take you on a journey through multi-layer, outside-in, behavioural-driven testing. If you want to take my advice and get AWS certified, I highly recommend a Cloud Guru. I used them to learn what I needed for the Developer Associate exam, and they are a great, affordable platform. If you want to check, out, check me out in action in the ring, Naxu 3.0 is going to be on Foxtel at the end of August. Otherwise, just search for my name on YouTube. <clears throat> Uh, I'm open to questions if anyone has them, but uh, if you want to ask me more about my journey or if you've got questions or you're stuck with something you're working on or whatever, come and talk to me. Like I said earlier, other people being open to talking helped me a lot on my journey and I absolutely believe in paying it forward. Thanks everyone for listening and I hope you found something interesting to take away. We have time for a couple of questions. Uh, come on. I have statements, which isn't allowed. <laughs> hey, uh, um, great talk. How does the dislocated shoulder affect your uh, fighting right now? Right now, so, uh, um, sorry. I have to try really hard to not do it again. <laughs> Follow-up question, how does the dislocated shoulder affect your coding? Yeah, that's what I wanted to know. <laughs> um, actually, you get, a, you get a shoulder immobilizer when it happens and a lot of drugs. So <laughs> you, can kinda just <laughs> you can kinda just rest your arm on the desk and yeah, you got one hand still. <laughs> I'm a slow typer anyway. <laughs> Would you recommend starting off in assembly? I found that surprising. I loved it. It was great. That was cool. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's what I started in. It worked out for me. What were your mentor's reasoning for that? Um, he thought that you should have an understanding from the lowest level first. make my statement based on that and I have to say I started with Rails Girls and I found it way too high level and magic Yeah, and I totally get that. That's right, yeah. when I got to Rails it was kind of like wow this is so easy but I'm really glad that I, I have an understanding of how things work underneath as well.